Welcome to Rebuilding a Model Steam Plant, Part 27. Filling the gas tank, testing and setting up the gas burner to get the flame as per the instructions that came with the burner. Fitting the hand pump and water tank. This is a rebuild of an existing plant and I'm trying to use most of the components. The large tank that you're looking at at the moment has a removable gas tank inside it. I'll show you this shortly. The first thing to do when working with gas indoors is to open windows. Here's the gas I'm going to use. It's a mix of 70% butane to 30% propane and it's designed to be used for cooking stoves. At the right hand side of the tank is an adapter and here I'm screwing it to the tank. The problem is that these filler adapters are not all created equal so to speak. This one is a bad one. I don't know where it came from, but I can tell you it is not very good. This clip shows you how it works. Once you fit the adapter to the tank, you press the end of it, which releases the liquid gas into the small gas tank. And here is the small gas tank. This one is a Cheddar Models gas tank, and I've had it for quite a long time. You have to be very careful when working with this gas for two reasons. One is it's poisonous, and two, it is explosive in a confined space. I think it's time for a serious health and safety warning. Do not fill the gas tank indoors for obvious reasons. Take it outside to do that. A gas explosion in a confined space needs to be avoided. Always open a window if you're using a gas burner system indoors to lessen the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. Here's a good reason for not filling the gas tank indoors. Watch this. This gas tank adapter is very poor and it doesn't seal against the canister. When I press the pipe into the gas tank, which opens the valve inside the canister, the gas goes everywhere. It's liquid gas and it's very cold and very smelly. Like someone I knew a long time ago. After taking the gas tanks outside and filling the small one from the large one, wasting quite a lot in the process, I eventually had enough gas in the small tank to supply the gas burner which I've just lit as you can see. This is a Bix burner and from my experience they are rather prone to cremation. It's absolutely vital to adjust the position of the gas jet to get the right type of flame. The instructions that come with these Bix burners say you need to aim for a lot of small triangles on top of the burner and you do not want it to be incandescent. It's difficult to get it just right though. If you push the burner in too far, then yes, it's okay. But then when you turn the gas pressure down, you can get a yellow sooty flame that you don't want. This seems to look about right. I'm going to run it for a while and see how hot the burner gets. This is running in real time. And as you can see, very slowly, the burner is beginning to be incandescent. It's all down to the position of the gas jet in the Venturi tube. Here's the gas jet and I've marked it with a felt tip pen at the optimum position. What happens if you get the burner too hot? It starts to make a funny noise and it burns out. I really cannot recommend this. I'm looking for gas leaks with a naked flame. I used a safer method which was my nose to sniff the top of the gas tank container to make sure it didn't smell of gas. I only use the lighter to illustrate the way you shouldn't do it. With a newly filled gas tank inside the container, the gas pressure is high and the flame is quite vigorous. It has the gas inside the gas tank chills owing to internal evaporation. The pressure drops. I cannot stress enough how important it is to make sure that you have the gas jet in precisely the right place. Here you can clearly see when the little blue triangles appear. Time now to turn the plant around and mount the water pump. This is a PM Research water pump and it's quite a well made piece of equipment. In this clip I'm applying some oil to the moving parts. This is a good idea to prevent wear over a longer period. You don't need a lot, just a small drop on every moving part should do the trick. The main lubrication of the ram in the cylinder is done by the water. But with the application of oil, it feels a lot smoother already. 
This was originally screwed to the baseboard using some wood screws. I'm not going to use these, I much prefer the method I'm about to show you. This is stage one of the method. I'm drilling holes in the baseboard, one eighth of an inch in diameter. And after making a mess, I blew away all the dust using my compressed airline. Here I'm using a 4BA tap to start the thread in the hole. I'm only going part of the way down because once I screw the bolt into the threaded hole it will cut its own thread in the 1 8 of an inch diameter hole. So this is stage 1, drill and tap the holes. Stage 2 is to fit the 4BA bolts to hold the part in place. And then, once it's all done, remove the bolts Apply a drop of cyanoacrylate adhesive to each of the holes, let the adhesive thoroughly set, and then repeat the process of screwing the 4BA bolts in place. This gives quite a firm and strong thread. I've done this for many years. I used to do quite a lot of radio control model aircraft building, and it was a very common thing to do, and it always worked for me. But alas, some viewers write in and tell me not to do this. One problem I have with making these videos are the experts. People who make snidey or clever comments, I always check out their channel and usually it says this channel has no content, which doesn't surprise me. Or people who just tell me how to do the job, it really does get tedious after a while. Something simple, even though the bracket's bent, I'm screwing the water tower down onto the baseboard. I'll straighten the bracket later, because this is only the initial fixing. One series I've been making, which is still current, is about changing the LED arrangement on the canopy of a small showman's engine. And the number of people who have told me I'm doing it wrong is just unbelievable. They talk to me like I'm some sort of an idiot, and believe me, I'm far from that. I trained as an electronics engineer, and I spent quite a few years repairing and reconditioning Hammond organs, so I do know a little bit about electricery. I even included a video link to Keith Appleton's Organ Works, showing clearly that I do know what I'm doing with the soldering iron and electronics. If this constant telling me how to do the job continues from people who don't really know, then I'm going to disallow comments on the channel. All this advice is never from my Patreon supporters. It only occurs when the videos become public sometime after they've been on Patreon. Back to the job, using the same principle as I did with the water pump, I've secured the boiler's mounting plate to the baseboard. Time for one final look at the burner, sat all alone by itself in the middle of the board. Very soon it will have a boiler bolted over the top of it. Here I'm just checking the amount of heat in the proximity of the burner, which is considerable, but when the boiler's fitted in place it will look something like this, and the heat will be contained within the boiler casing. Well, that's the plan anyway. This steam plant has a dynamo, which is going to be used to power lights. I can't wait for the stupid comments to come in when I wire the lights. As a final note, the traction engine LEDs that apparently I wired up all wrong only worked for 13 years, and they were working when I decided to take them off and fit less of them so there will only be 40 this time. I'm mentioning this episode with the traction engine because, unfortunately, there is an LED array which is a separate unit and I'm going to make it plug into the baseboard so that the dynamo can light the lights on it. And once again, in case anybody's thinking about writing in, I did train as an electronics engineer. I worked for a company that made scientific equipment. And that is it for this episode. I'd just like to say to everyone out there, including all the experts, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and don't write in automatically the minute you see me talking about something on the video. I do actually know what I'm talking about when I make these videos. Thank you and good night, or good morning, depending where you are in the world. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.